As the previous example, I think, already shows, a private equity acquisition is a type of deal that is very heavy on finance. It's a situation where financial modeling, financial policy is extremely important. Okay, so, and there is, a, in fact, a model, a financial model that is very specific to private equity deals, which we call the yeah, LBO model. It's a leverage buyout model. You know, it has its own name in, the, in, in, finance, in, in, in finance jargon because it's a very common model that uh, private equity uh, firms use. The, the goal of this leverage buyout model is specifically uh, uh, to forecast a company's ability to repay debt. As, we, as we've been discussing, a leverage buyout is a situation when leverage increases a lot. In some cases, it might increase beyond you know, what, what's the optimal point. So it becomes very important for the, for the private equity fund to optimize financial structure and to make sure that, that the target is going to be able to repay that. What the, the LBO model is going to allow, to, uh, to, to allow us to, to, to do is to, is, to, is, to, is to write this down in a financial planning model and to improve our financial decisions. What I want to do is I want to give an example of a leverage buyout model using a recent deal. That was the leverage buyout of ADT security systems that happened in, uh, in 2016. ADT was acquired by Apollo in a, about $7 billion deal. It was one of the largest uh, standard leverage buyouts that happened in, uh, in, um, during 2016. That price is a 56% is a premium over the pre-deal value, right? So as we learned already in the course, private equity funds also pay large premium to, to shareholders of a, a target, right? And what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about financial policy. So in, specifically, we're going to learn how we can use a leverage buyout model to help make financial policy decisions at the time of the LBO, right? So the steps of a leverage buyout model are, are, are typically these three steps where you start by gathering data pre-LBO on uh, key financial policy variables, and then we incorporate the financial consequences of the LBO and analyze the results. That, as I discussed already, is going to allow us to perhaps make better informed financial decisions. Let's look at the data for ADT. So uh, this is the, uh, uh, a snapshot from ADT's capital structure prior to the deal announcement. It had $5.4 billion, billion in outstanding debt already. The equity was worth like f about $4.5 billion at that time. The debt structure, again, typical of a large public company like ADT, most of the debt was coming from, from bonds at that point, right? So... Uh, ADT had $5 billion in outstanding bonds prior to the leverage buyout, and it didn't really have much in terms of, uh, of term loans. So, you know, it had drawn down on a credit line, uh, but it didn't really have any term loans at that point. This is some data on financing costs and ratings. You can see that ADT already had a kind of a lowish rating, right? Its credit rating at the time of the deal was BB minus, okay? And, um, and you can see that the yield, the yield to maturity that ADT was paying at that time were around 6%, uh, uh, you know, um, or the, the coupons here, I think that's going to be more relevant data on the interest payment. The uh, uh, ADT was paying coupons of the, the range of 4 to 6% at the time of the, of the leverage buyout. And finally, we look at payout. ADT was actively reporting stock and paying dividends. Uh, uh, prior to the leverage buyout. So it was distributing cash to, to investors. Okay? So let's put this uh, uh, together here. That's the summary. ADT is starting this, uh, this leverage buyout with a high leverage already. It's 55% leverage, a rating of BB minus, an average interest payment of approximately 5%. That comes from the coupons. Okay? And it's paying out $140 million a year in dividend and repurchasing $320 to $1.4 billion a year in the previous three years. So that's a summary of those pictures, those uh, tables that we saw. So what we're going to do is we're going to build some cash flow forecasts using this data, right? So this, this is a standard uh, uh, financial planning model similar to what the ones we learned in Corporate Finance 1, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to forecast uh, the company's profits, forecast the company's interest payments, and all of this data is, uses data prior to the LBO. So that's what we call this pre-LBO cash flow forecast. 
So you can see here that the, 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 the interest payment is 5% of the amount of debt that, that AGT had prior to the LBO, for example. Some of these forecasts, like forecasts for, for uh, uh, profits for uh, EBIT, come from Capital IQ. The, uh, some of the other forecasts we're, uh, I'm making up myself. So for example, I'm assuming that capital expenditures are going to keep growing at a constant rate, that the company is going to pay dividends and share repurchase at the same amount that it paid in 2015, for example. And then what we can see, the bottom line, as we did in Corporate Finance 1, is we can measure the change in cash. Okay? So in, in particular for, for this example, for the next five years, what's happening is that ADT does not seem to be generating enough cash right, to increase its cash holdings. In fact, it has negative changes in cash forecasted for all the next five years. Right? The bottom line is that even prior to the LBO, ADT is already in a tight financial situation. This is a company that really doesn't have uh, a lot of operational cash to, 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 to spare, it's already uh, facing a tight budget. <coughs> Given this, right, if uh, even before the LBO, right, probably what needs to happen is that uh, ADT would either need to cut capital expenditures, pay out, or else raise additional capital from investors. The current situation doesn't seem to be sustainable. Right? AD, a, 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 what's going to have to happen is ADT might have to have, you know, to, uh, even if the leverage buyout had not happened, ADT might have to change something about the financial structure of the company. And now come the, the LBO, right? So uh, uh, starting from this situation, starting from this tight budget situation, ADT is being acquired by a private equity fund. Right? Given what we just learned, how much new debt would ADT be able to support, right? So I think it would be pretty easy for you to, to guess what is the new, you know, what, what would be a reasonable guess for the financial structure of the ADT LBO? That's the question I have for you. The answer is that ADT is probably not going to be able to support that much debt, okay? Because it's already starting from this tight financial situation, the, 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 AD, the ADT leverage buyout is probably going to have a large equity component. And this is what we're going to see uh, 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 going forward. I'm going to show you how the LDT, uh, uh, LBO was financed. And it actually turned out that uh, the, the LBO was financed with a large equity component. 